Hello, MUCT105L, uh, Intro to Theory Ear Training class. This is your uh, week four remote lecture. Okay, let's start right off with um, a warming up in the solfege scale. We're going to sing a couple of, uh, of examples, do a couple of rhythm exercises, and then I'm going to introduce a new concept to you. All right, here we go. Let's uh, warm up on the scale. Go. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. All right, and you can uh, pull that back and warm up as much as you'd like. Uh, but for now, if you are ready, um, open up your Berkowitz book and go to uh, page 10. Okay, we are going to continue on with what we did on last Friday. On page 10, uh, we ended at number 30. We're going to go on to 31. Uh, these are very similar to what we had done before. You can see some of the gestures there in the first measure. There's the full chord followed by a five step down, etc. Um, all these basic melodic gestures. It just adds a little bit of a rhythm, some dotted rhythms. Uh, but I would like for you to analyze this melody in number 31. Notice <coughs> Notice that there are kind of four sections here, at least four sections that are, um, are distinguished by having ties across them, uh, little two-measure sections. This is, again, a kind of a larger two-phrase structure, um, the first four versus the second four. The big giveaway, of course, is the difference in dynamics between the first four and the last four, the first four forte, the last four piano. Um, also, notice that uh, these two phrases are linked together uh, because of repetition. This is very often the case in a two-phrase structure. One phrase will have a certain kind of a melodic contour, and the second phrase will often begin similarly to the way that the first melody did. In order to link them together, we hear like, ah, We've been here before. And if you can see here, the first two measures um, with the, uh, uh, the full chord ascending and then the five step down is exactly the same as the first two measures in the second half of the phrase. So that's how they're linked together. Your ear remembers them as being related. Okay? And then the second two measures of each of those phrases are slightly different. All right, let me get the uh, key of A flat and we'll go ahead and sing it. All right. One and two and three and four. Do, mi, sol, do, re, do, ti, la, sol, la, sol, fa, mi, re. See how those link together? Very good. Uh, let's do number 32. Take a quick look at this one. Uh, this one is in a multi, you know, multi-phrase structure where they're a little sig more significantly different from one, one from the other. So let's go ahead and sight sing our way through this one. Maybe a little slower than we did previously. B flat major. All right, here we go. One and two and three and four. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, mi, sol, la, sol, fa, mi, re, la, sol, mi, sol, do. Number 
32 that we just sang. You might want to do it a couple more times to get a feel for it. It's a little bit different from what we've been doing up until now in that there are leaps, okay, where we're going in leapwise motion that are not between Do, Mi, and Sol. There were some leaps between Re and La there. Okay, still a perfect fifth, like between Do and Sol, but between two different syllables. So important, you might want to go back and check that out again. All right, that's all we're going to do in the Berkowitz right now. Pull out the Kazez Rhythm Book, and we'll do an example there. Um, if you open to page 19, go to page 19, there is only uh, one example on that page, number 24. And you can see back on page 18, they're talking about what is going on in number 24, and that is uh, mixed meters. Okay, there are multiple meters. 2-4, 3-4, and then 2 four. So The meters are changing um, uh, within... The, the beat still remains the same, and that's the most important thing, is that the unit of the beat, the quarter note, is identical. Okay, so we can keep everything together. Let's go through this one, make sure to do the dynamics, watch out for the rests, and let's see what happens. I'll give you two subdivided measures. One, and two, and one E, and a two, and T, T, Ticky, T, T, T. T, ticky, T, T, T. T, 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 ticky, T, 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 T. T, T. T, 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 ticky, T, 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 ticky, T, 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 ticky, 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 T, off. That one, might, that one might be a little bit challenging because of the rest, because of the ties over the bar line. So if you found yourself a little lost, go back, try it a couple more times until you feel comfortable. The next thing we're going to do on Friday's class is start looking at composite meters. Composite meters like 5-4 and 7-4 and things like that. But for now, uh, we're going to put our books away and I'm going to introduce to you a concept, a relatively new concept, about scales. Up until now, up until now, we have only done sight singing in the major mode. And if we've got our treble clef up here, you can see. Let's move that a little bit back. So we've got a little more room, all right. We can see with the treble clef, this is our ascending and descending major scale. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, ti, la, sol, fa, mi, re, do. All right. And the major scale has a certain profile, this is what we talked about in class on Friday, has a certain profile of half steps and whole steps. Okay. And the most important thing to remember as these scales are concerned is where the tendencies lie. And we talked about how, that looks like it's smiling at you, how between mi and fa, there is the half-step relationship, the half-tone relationship, or the semitone relationship. So there's a little bit more of a magnetic attraction between these two notes than between, say, re and mi or re and do, because those are whole steps apart from one another. Similarly, the interval between t and do is also a semitone. It's also smiling at you. So there's another magnetic attraction there. Remember, we've done the exercises where we go, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, and leave it there, and it doesn't feel satisfying until we go, Do. Okay. And there's a similar uh, relationship between Mi and Fa. Okay, so that's how the major scale works. That's just, um, those are the proportions. So now let's talk about minor scales. We're going to talk about minor scales. And all that minor scales do is they just... They simply change the proportion of whole steps and half steps in the scale. Okay. As in major, they were between the third and the fourth scale degree, the seventh scale degree, and the octave. In minor, they are in different places. So let's talk, uh, there are three minor scales that we're going to learn, and let's write these down. The reason I'm bringing these up here in the uh, remote lecture is because your homework assignment for, uh, for Friday. 
uh, your skills assignment on musictheory.net is uh, identifying minor scales. So let's talk about what they are and how they're different. Let's start with the natural minor scale. A good place to start. And the difference between any major scale and any natural minor scale is three things. The third scale degree, the sixth scale degree, and the seventh scale degree. Each of those are lowered. In this case, they will be lowered with flats. And uh, we'll do it descending as well. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about um, the syllables that we use. Um, we'll talk about that on Friday as we're singing them. Uh, you'll hear me say, but we'll just talk about scale degrees for right now. We'll talk about syllables later. But here, now that we drop, let's start at the bottom, now that we have dropped the third scale degree lower, now the uh, relationship between the third and the fourth scale degrees is a whole tone. Okay, it had been, an, it had been a, half, uh, a half step before, but we flatted it, now it's a whole step. Now, the relationship between the second and third scale degrees is that one that has the half step. Okay? No longer is there the relation, half step relationship between the seventh scale degree and the octave. Okay? This is now a whole tone. This is a whole tone. Here is where the semitone or the half step is. Okay, there. Let me play it on the piano so you can hear it. I'll play the major scale first. Let's do it up here. Now hear the natural minor scale. attraction in these two places different from what it had been before. That is what the natural minor scale sounds like. Let's, um, each of the other scales is, kind, is derived from the natural minor scale, so we'll start from the natural minor scale when determining the other ones. Okay, the next one we're going to do is what we call the harmonic minor scale, harmonic minor scale, and there's just one difference between the natural minor scale and the harmonic minor scale, right here. Okay. I'm going to put a natural here, in parentheses, not because we need it, because we have no key signature here, but just to remind you that this is raised where the other one had been uh, lowered in the natural minor scale. So we do a couple of interesting things in the harmonic minor scale. We still have the half-step relationship between the second and third scale degree, between the fifth and sixth scale degree as before, but now we're almost borrowing the attraction from the major scale. We've got T do and do T going back the other direction. Okay, so we actually have three half-step relationships going on in this scale. And one thing that that does is this interval here, it's not even a whole step anymore. It's a, it's a whole step and a half, or what we call an augmented second interval. So it's a really big interval now, and it gives the scale a very unique sound that I'm going to play in just a moment. First, I'm going to play just the normal natural minor scale from before. harmonic minor scale. Pay close attention, especially between the 6th and 7th scale degrees. this scale a very unique sound. And there's one more scale that we will learn. This is melodic. Okay, I'm going to start from 
the natural liner scale, as we did before, so we can see what is different. Okay, the third scale degree, still lowered, no problem. There's that half-step relationship there. That's always going to be there in every minor scale. Melodic minor scale is unique in that it has one form when you are ascending and another form when you are descending. Let's do the descending first. The descending melodic minor scale is exactly what you see here. The natural minor scale. When you're descending from Do down toward the octave there, it'll be just the same. But when you are ascending, you're going to kind of borrow a page from minor mode, sorry, major mode, like in harmonic minor and also here. So when you are ascending, you are going to fail to drop the 6th and 7th scale degrees as you did in minor mode. Remember from the gestures, sol, la, ti, do, how that's a really strong way to end a melody? Well, you can still do that in minor mode. Just when you're going away from Do down, then you'll drop it, uh, the 7th and 6th scale degrees, so that they sound minor. So this one is going to sound differently ascending than it does descending. So let's hear it. I'll play the natural minor scale first for contrast. how the melodic minor scale works. So when you are um, doing your uh, homework assignment, your skills uh, printout assignment this week, make, uh, make absolutely certain that you, uh, first thing you should do is determine is it the major scale or is it some sort of a minor scale? If it's the major scale, easy, you already have the answer, but if it's a minor scale, then you need to go over and decide which minor scale is it. And each of these three minor scales have, a, have distinct uh, timbres, distinct sounds, especially the melodic minor, which is different ascending than it is descending. So you won't be, you won't uh, uh, mistake it for anything else. And the harmonic minor has that very large interval near the top, and the natural minor, everything is lowered. Uh, so that's what I um, wanted to make sure you got. We will uh, talk about what we do with chromatic notes in solfege on class on Friday, and we'll we'll do a couple of examples of this as well. All right, so if you have any questions, uh, be certain uh, that you may email me, and uh, best of luck. I'll see you guys on Friday.